I'm going to be making my own gift today of the homemade variety. I am making a doll. I have never made a doll before. <laughs> it's going to be a cloth doll, a rag doll, whatever you want to call it. I've been seeing this new generation of rag dolls in gift shops and children's stores that are so, so sweet. They have kind of long legs and arms and bigger heads and beautiful bushy yarn hair and I am just obsessed. And they're so sweet, but they are pretty pricey out of my budget personally. And every time I see a little doll, I always think, oh, I wish it had maybe different hair or a different outfit. It doesn't quite encapsulate exactly what I'm looking for. So I decided I'm gonna make my own. I do have a bit of supplies already at my home, obviously my sewing machine and thread and tools. But other than that, the fabrics and the yarn and other ornamental details I'll be using, those were all $11, pretty amazing. So this is my $11 modern rag doll. Let's jump into the steps. My first step is gathering supplies. I'm popping over to my local craft store, picking up some fabric, some yarn for hair, ribbon, and you know I have to hit the scrap section. And look what I found, some tool for the skirt. I'm shopping sale, I'm shopping clearance, plus a couple coupons. I got all of this for $11. Now I'm back home going through my goods for the project. I have my skin colored fabric, a cheetah print fabric for the body and dress, my pink tulle for the skirt, ribbon, which I'm going to use for a belted waist, yarn for her beautiful locks, and for supplies I already have, I have my sewing kit, which has thread, my pin cushion, my old people scissors, rolling cutter, and stuffing and i may or may not have decapitated another stuffed animal to retrieve this next step i'm going to roughly sketch my doll and create a pattern and when i say rough sketch i mean real rough i'm just playing around with a pencil to try to figure out the proportions on her i definitely don't get it right the first second third fourth maybe fifth time <laughs> but eventually it starts looking like what I want. Once I have a pretty good idea of the proportions of my doll at a glance or at a distance, now it's time for me to create my pattern. At this point, I am essentially redrawing my sketch to the scale that I actually want the doll to be. There's no exact science to what <laughs> I'm doing. I am just kind of going for it, which is what I do with most projects. So you can see me drawing and redrawing here till it feels right. When it comes to making patterns, I know the correct way is to build in the seam allowance, but I'm just kind of guesstimating. So I'm creating the doll to be a bit bigger than I hope she is in the very end. And that's how I'm factoring in my seam allowance. Once I have a pretty good pattern drawn out, what I'm going to do is fold them in half and cut them out that way so that it ends up looking symmetrical. For your pattern pieces, you'll need the body, the head, the arms, and the legs. I cut out two legs and two arms and then realized I only need one of each. Now that my pattern is cut out and ready to rock, I'm going to prep my fabric by ironing it flat so that I can get some clean, crisp cuts. I picked a neutral leopard print fabric. I thought it would be a fun twist, some sassy, some girly. This is for my sister-in-law's baby daughter who's gonna be born at the end of the month. I'm using some tape to stick down the pieces. That way they don't slide around as I am cutting them. You can also pin them. I just think the tape is a bit easier and quicker and efficient, at least for me. So I'm going to be cutting out four arms, four legs, and two pieces for the head. You'll need to pay attention if your fabric is double or single sided with the print. For my leopard print fabric, it was just one single side, so I wanted to make sure that the correct sides were lined up so that when I sew them and fold them out, the correct side will show. For the rest of my pieces, the fabric is just a solid double-sided cotton, and so luckily I don't need to pay too much attention to what side of the fabric I'm cutting because I can just flip it around if I need to. 
Now that my pieces are pinned, it's time to get sewing. I have a super beginner brother sewing machine. It does the job for my projects and I am just doing a very simple straight stitch that is not too close together, not too far apart, right there in the middle. I guess you could just say a standard stitch and I am just going around each piece. So I'm sewing the head, the legs, the arms and the body. And you'll want to leave one side open for each of the pieces because we'll be putting stuffing in there. Now that all my pieces are sewn together, it's time to turn everything right side out. Not gonna lie, this was the least fun part of making the doll. I couldn't believe how hard it was to swirl those things inside out. I mean, it's not an absolute nightmare, but it did take more time than I expected. I tried to use a pen to help push things along, but it kind of just took my fingers and patience. Once all of my pieces were turned right side out, it was time to get stuffing. This step was also a little bit tedious. I found it helped to use my scissors to grasp a wad of stuffing and push it down. It was a lot easier than using a pen or a chopstick or anything else like that because the scissors actually clamped the stuffing and then I was able to really get it down there. You just have to be a bit careful using scissors because you could easily just stab through what you just had sewn. After stuffing the arms, legs, and head, next I pinned the arms to the body and also the head to the body so I could start hand stitching those. Once I started trying to attach the head to the body, I realized that I didn't really leave room for a neck. So word of the wise, leave your neck a lot longer. I mean, longer the better, you can always trim it. As I was trying to put the head on, the stuffing was just fluffing out. It was a bit crazy. And so what I did was pin it down straight across and then sew the neck across right there before I attached it to the body. A few extra steps you could avoid if you just made a longer neck. After attaching the arms and the head to the body, it was time to start stuffing the body and attaching the legs. It helped to pin the skirt underneath itself since that was the last open hole that I would need to sew across. Hanging on the couch, watching a movie, finishing stuffing the body and sewing the end of the skirt. After finishing putting the body together, it's time for the fun stuff. I'm gonna start stitching the face. I had a few ideas of what I wanted to do and kind of just freestyled it. I first put down a really light sketch with pencil and then just started sewing on top of it. I will say stitching into this flimsy doll head wasn't the greatest idea. I've seen in other doll tutorials the recommendation to stitch the face while the fabric is taut in a cross stitch hoop. Yes, would highly recommend that. Next, it was time to put the skirt together. I took my tool and folded it in half a few times, comparing it to the doll to get it to the right size. And then I used my pins to make some pleats. And then I took my needle and thread and attached this glorious whimsical skirt to the doll. Now it's time to put on this lovely bow. I found this ribbon at the fabric store. It's a cloth ribbon with a flare of metallic running through it. It looks really fun with the leopard print. And so I'm just tying it around the doll to see how it's going to fit. Now I'm sewing the ribbon to the doll. I sewed just one seam along the middle of the ribbon. You could also do them on the outer edges if you wanted it a bit more secured. And after I tied my bow, I also added a few more stitches in there just so the bow would stay in place. Finally, it's time for hair. I cannot wait for this step because it's all going to come together. I'm just measuring the yarn up against the doll's head to find length, going a little bit longer just to be sure, and then cutting out a bunch of pieces that same length. My plan for the doll's hair is to give her some sort of pigtail, so I want a part down the middle. So what I'm doing here is taping down all of my strands on a piece of paper so that they're all bunched together and I can get one seam across them. I'm gonna be using my sewing machine for this. And I am doubling down two layers just to have extra, extra hair. I feel the fuller, the better. I would rather have a bit too much than it being on the sparse side. Sewing through the hair on my machine was super quick and simple. 
Tearing the paper off, on the other hand, was not as easy. For some reason, I did it super awkwardly. <laughs> what you should do is kind of fold it in half and then pull the sides straight or flat from each other and they'll just tear right in a half. It's time to pin the hair to this sweet little doll. So I am just pinning it right down the middle and the hair seam was longer than her head. So I actually doubled it up. Now I'm doing a little trim on her to get all the lengths relatively the same. I do want them to be a little messy and imperfect, but I did have some lurking stranglers that were quite long. I have decided to go with some low ponytails and I'm just taking a piece of the yarn and tying it around each pigtail and then I'll turn the knot on the inside so it's more or less an invisible pigtail. Stuff for the hair is securing it a bit more because right now only the part is attached. So I'm going through with my needle and thread and hand stitching various stitches throughout to adhere it to the head a bit better. Now that her hair is styled, she is finished. My very last step and always one of my favorite steps is wrapping up the gift and sending her on her way. Thanks for joining me today. I had so much fun walking you through my ragdoll tutorial. She turned out so cute. I hope you think so too. She's not technically perfect, but that is the charm of a homemade gift, a gift made with love. All in all, I had the best time, especially because it was something new. I really enjoyed the process. I hope you did too. I have some fun videos in store. I'll catch you in my next one. And until then, have a fun day. Oh yes, don't forget to like and subscribe. I really, really appreciate your support as I get my channel up and moving and grooving. Bye.